what's on YouTube. And uh, I found this video. It says, the rapper who lied his way to stardom. <laughs> and it's Lil Tecca, bruh. All right, bruh. I, hey, Lil Tecca songs are dope as fuck. Let's just start there. Uh, that Chopper Shoot the Loudest. If y'all ain't heard that, go listen to that. That's my favorite Lil Tecca song in the world. But I want to know how to, what, what they mean by he lied his way to the top. So we finna get into it. Let's just uh, sit back and see what they talk about. I'm finna eat my wings, by the way. Well, the wings I got left over. So we finna uh, rock out to this video. It's a little 15 minute one. in a genre where realness is everything. Lil Tecca is an exception to the rule when it comes to how being exposed as a fraud can quite literally end your career. Given that he's openly admitted to lying in songs about topics like girls, guns, and fancy cars. I, I don't do like multiple girls, you feel me? Like I'd rather just like one. I don't have no straps for nobody. I don't even try. You'd expect that the hip hop community would give him the same treatment that they gave to rappers like CJ, Takashi 69, or even Slim Jesus back in 2015. However, okay, let's be real. It's cameras everywhere. Why are y'all so caught up with niggas being real? For me as a DJ and, and somebody who's grew up around the lifestyle, in the streets and been around people who's in the streets and stuff i do understand claiming you're from it and not being from it i tell everybody all day i'm not i'm not from the streets being from the street like being street and being from the streets are two totally different things you get what i'm saying like somebody could be from the block aka me who grew up with folks and stuff who do the shit who rock out like that and that are known for that but they know that i'm not doing that i'm doing other shit but they fuck with your boy they fuck with me or they may like just take somebody like kendrick lamar who's from the block probably could probably let's just like kendrick wasn't doing that shit but his cousins and family members and shit but la nature just because he's from it he's in it by association that's typically what people like me go through so by association just who we hang out with we may somebody may not like us just because we hang out with somebody they don't like which is understandable and street politics but i'm not out here claiming something and doing something that i'm not you know what i'm saying but i know street politics so i know like if if my cousin if cuzzo tell me he don't fuck with him you know just keep your eye keep an eye out they ne they necessarily not gonna do nothing to me because they know i'm not that but it's understandable like i ain't gotta fuck with you you ain't gotta fuck with me i know you don't fuck with cuz it is what it is that's usually and that's usually what it is especially in the south so Lateka, like i can't remember in his songs that he claimed any of that shit but i understand if you claiming that shit in songs and stuff especially in rap and then it comes out that you not that then i can see folks not fuck with you and being being upset i can't really think if Tekka, like even in chopper shoot the lot of what is he said uh trip gonna send that boy the hell i mean he does talk about shooting folks but if he's saying he ain't got no guns for nobody but if he already stated that years ago before he made songs and it, let's be frank a lot of folks today don't know about guns and and only talk about guns because of call of duty and video games and so they they yelling out seven 762s and uh fucking 223s and all this stuff because the call of duty telling you what type of bullets and stuff they use which you know nine millimeters and all this shit which again it is what it is but if you come out and just let it be known that you're not around that and you don't do that but you rapping in a sound dope 
a lot of, a lot more people will respect you versus you claiming something that you're not. But let's continue. For considering that his latest project outsold notable figures such as Quavo and Lil Yachty, Lil Tecca clearly discovered a successful formula that his predecessors were unable to do. It's your boy Luesta, and today we're going to be investigating how Lil Tecca became hip-hop's most successful hypocrite. But before we get there, let's take a look at his come up. Um, I don't think that's fair to say Lil Tecca is hip-hop's most successful hypocrite. I want to say that's 6 9 6 9 is is that let's get six nine that and probably gonna i don't think tech i don't know i ain't seen the video let's watch it and as you'll see he lived a life that was completely different than what he would eventually start to rap about born tyler justin anthony sharp in queens new york tekka may have been born in one of hip bro folks be i don't know how i'm so bro i'm terrified when i blow up but when I get there and somebody make a before you, he was famous and shit. And they find my pictures and shit of when I was a kid. Oh, Lord. Hell no. Oh, Lord. I don't know how the fuck they be finding these pictures, bro. It's insane. The pops hot spots. But eventually, he moved to the comfort of Long Island by the seventh grade. As a result, he didn't make a name for himself rhyming in a cipher or on the street corner like many other New York rappers. Instead, much like other famous cap rap specialist YBN Namir, his first experience as a rapper came over a gaming headset. How'd you get into actually making music? It was on some Xbox shit. We was on like roasting each other. And then I was like, I don't want to roast you on Xbox no more. I'm going to roast you on SoundCloud. After that, bruh, they shot out for doing YBN like that. YBN from my state, bruh. Just because he's from Alabama, I'm representing, bro. That's my dog, bruh. I ain't listened to a YBN song since he dropped. Uh, Damn, I forgot the song that blew him up. But just because he's from Alabama, we're not finna take no disrespect, bro. That song rocking. Anybody from Alabama, we don't take no disrespect. And I'm riding on that. I'm riding on anybody Alabama. I don't even like the Crimson Tide, but it. When they when they get into the NFL, I fuck with their teams, bro. Just cuz. That he started spitting in real life and got himself taken to the principal's office in the process. After that, I um, started dissing people in school. And then my guidance counselor found out. And then I deleted all the diss tracks. Although he was initially rapping just to poke fun at his friends, making diss tracks helped Tekka understand the power of punchline and also the importance of exaggerating to get a response out of an audience. Nonetheless, Tekka knew that from the very moment he started rapping that he wanted to make a living off it. I just felt like I had to go crazy. Like I felt like I ain't, I, I ain't had no space to leave nothing on the table. Like I had to take that opportunity for real, for real. Despite the fact that he was barely a teenager, Tekka was laser focused on achieving his goals and just didn't realize how fast he would be ushered onto the world stage as a young kid i already knew what i wanted to do so i was 14 feeling like all the people at the top are 20 whatever in 10 years i'm gonna be 24 they're gonna be 30 something out the door i definitely didn't see it happening the exact way it happened after steadily building a name for himself in long island everything would change when he dropped a little track by the name of ransom In a song where he expressed how he had twin glocks for his ops, this track catapulted Tekka to overnight stardom. However, it was lyrics like these that would also cause him some trouble down the road. But at first, nobody except himself believed that the song would actually become a hit. It was one of my favorite songs when I made it. As soon as I made it, I was telling everyone in the studio, this is, this is the one. But everyone was saying Did It Again was the one that day, I'm saying Ransom. At just 16 years old, Tekka already knew when he had a hit on his hands. And when Ransom dropped, it instantly put him on everyone's radar. After Cole Bennett took a chance on the unsigned artist, the track became the fourth most successful song in the history of the Lyrical Lemonade channel, up there with the likes of Eminem and Juice World. And as of June 2022, it has since garnered over a billion streams on Spotify as well. Even crazier, it peaked at number four on the charts, which took Tekka from being an absolute nobody into a territory that even rappers who've been doing this for decades can only imagine. No one, including Tekka and his manager, expected it was going to blow up like that, or even land him a record deal. A week after we dropped Ransom, I just got a random call, I was like, hello, is this? And I was like, this is Alex from Billboard magazine. I was calling to get information about little Tekka because we have him charting here with Ransom. I think I found out in the morning and my mom told me. Had there been label interest? For a fact. 
a bidding war broke out and just a really hectic 48, 72 hours. When the time was right, time. Suddenly, Tekka had the world's attention with his smooth flow and evident talent for melody. The only problem that he had was that as far as lyrical content went, there was nothing authentic about them. As rappers often do when they come out the gate, Lil Tekka insisted that his music was 100% him in an interview with DJ Booth saying, doing me is just how it should be. If it's not like that, then there's something wrong. However, it became clear that Tekka's interpretation of doing him was different from the typical definition in the rap game. Instead of rapping what his real life was like on Long Island, Tekka's attempt at doing him came from emulating the lyrical content of his influences. Chief Keef was like, it made rapping look cool to mm -hmm. me. Like it, was, like, it was so different. It was like the first of that type of shit. Like, I don't give a fuck. We just doing this shit on the internet. Basically, Tekka was cosplaying. And he got a song with Chief Keef called Chopper Shoot the Loudest. Go shit. You can't do nothing but respect it, bro as a thug in his bars while living a completely different lifestyle outside of the studio. Soon, this would complicate the discussion about his position in hip-hop and whether he even deserved the spot in the first place, to the extent that he contemplated quitting before fully establishing himself. Thankfully, that never happened, and soon after, he did an interview on Genius's YouTube channel where Tekka would do something that would alter the entire trajectory of his career. However, unlike our videos on CJ and Slim Jesus, this interview seemed to do more good than it did bad. Taking one look at Tekka back then, complete with braces, glasses, and his general energy, it was probably easy to tell that he wasn't doing dirt in the streets, like he said in his lyrics. In fact, even as Ransom took off, this was one of the main criticisms that he faced when the video dropped on Lyrical Lemonade, such as this comment that got 30,000 likes saying, why Tekka looked like an uncomfortable 13 year old who went to a party with his older brother and is scared to ask to leave. Most rappers, Lamborghinis and Grill, Lil Tekka, braces and golf carts. People always have their opinions, but people were first alerted to Tekka lying in a major way when he hopped on Genius to discuss Ransom in June of 2019. Now, most artists appear on Genius to give the deeper meaning behind their lyrics while simultaneously hoping to reach a broader audience. But for Tekka, he literally went on there to reveal that he never even held a firearm, despite all the gun-toting talk on his records. Um, I got two twin glocks turn you to a dancer. I don't have no straps for nobody. I don't got no straps. This small but hilarious clip went viral, leading to the interview becoming one of the most viewed videos on the Genius channel. But he was honest though. So what's the problem? He was, bro, he was being honest. That's like me right now. I play Destiny, right? If I make a rap talking about gun toting and shit, but use Destiny bars, and you think that I'm out here spinning a block, but I'm really spinning the ops on Destiny. Am I lying? No. Just because you perceived it that way, don't mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he was being honest. I don't see no problem with it, bro. This is, he, he, didn't, he didn't keep going, you know what I'm saying? He didn't keep, he didn't keep the shindig up, so. So when he returned to the platform to discuss his song, Did It Again, he went even further and completely revealed the truth to his audience in a way that's not often seen on Genius. I got a pack, hit him and do it again. Fucking, I'm fucking a friend. I have a girlfriend. I don't have no young ladies. Don't DM me. Got okay, airline, took one again. Crashed Ferrari, so I hopped in the bands. I don't even drive. I don't even know how to drive. That's dead. Talking about fashion and firearms that he never even touched, Tekka was unsurprisingly trolled for all the capping, with people struggling to believe just how blatant he was about it. As news of Tekka admitting his own lyrics were fake began to circulate, some fans started viewing him as a representation of what's wrong with rap. Hey, don't let that little Tekka shit convince y'all that it's cool to cap in your raps. The world needs more genuine shit. We got enough cap on the charts. Hip hop has just turned into who can cap the most. Lil Tekka was talking about driving foreign cars when he ain't even have a license. I mean, the other dude, I see where he coming from. It is a lot of cap in these raps, but I don't see nothing wrong with somebody having inspiration by some of these rappers. And if he's good, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm biased, maybe, I, maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm the weird one. Because people can tell when you authentic. And I think that's the problem. There's not a lot of authentic people in rap anymore. A lot of people faking the funk. Tech is authentic to me. His raps sound dope as fuck, but I feel like he just, he being himself. 
and he gonna say what y'all want to hear and he know how to do it dopely you know what i'm saying because that chopper shoot the loudest y'all gotta go listen to that that shit hard bro that's just how i view it though because he not talking about blood gang banging and shit now nah, the drug talk you know but then again his music fit that vibe so if he talking about weed and shit i don't know bro i'm conflict maybe i'm conflicted you was once conflicted i don't know i don't think i'm conflicted but i do i i don't know maybe i ain't never looked at little taken was like that nigga gotta be sp- killing niggas and shit hell no i don't look at little taken for that so maybe that's that's the problem y'all be looking at every rapper thinking they gotta do all this gangster shit hell no nah. But in Tekka's defense, he wasn't just doing this one minute, then backtracking the next to try and save face. Instead, he leaned into it and tried to make his audience feel stupid for being bothered by what he was doing. Having a gun don't make anyone gangster. So rapping about guns don't make you want to be gangster. You just rapping about guns. Like I rap about fucking bitches and I have a whole girl. I ain't fucking none of these bitches. Period. If you don't like what I'm talking about, go listen to someone else. It's that simple. In another interview... But he be honest, so like... Let's put it this way. If Drake do the same thing this nigga doing, y'all still listen to him. Let me let me reiterate. Drake do the same thing and y'all still listen to Drake. Why why is the problem with Lil Tecca do it? Only difference is Lil Tecca ain't ain't living in no fantasy world trying to become what he rapping about. That's Drake. Drake out here really not gangster and starting to live in this fantasy world out here really trying to be gangster do gangster shit and doing all this wild shit and y'all mad at little tecca come on now get come on now y'all y'all get on little tecca ass for the shit he say but y'all don't keep that same energy for drake that's how you know the world pick and choose who they want to listen to and who they had that heat for y'all putting this image on little tecca and want him to be a certain way but y'all need not keeping that same energy for drake but as soon as drake say all that shit it's all vibe it's it it's going platinum little tekka say it y'all got a problem with it man get the fuck out of here bro y'all tweaking review tekka claimed that he can do the things he's rapping about he just chooses not to do them and that he just wants to rap and make the music he likes even with his expose on himself tekka's 2019 i love you mixtape was massively successful and landed at number four on the billboards even with no features other than juice world hopping on the remix to ransom but as he was experiencing the greatest success of his life at the age of 17 tekka felt the pressure to the point where he almost gave up He hinted that he might quit just three months after the song's release and a tweet where he wrote, I love y'all. Shit won't be continuing as long as y'all thought. There's like 30 other rappers that sound just like me. Y'all will be good. Suddenly faced with adjusting to fame before he was even 18, as well as being trolled by critics who felt that him living a lie in his music meant that it was invalid, Tekka clearly found out the hard way of what it's like dealing with too much success at such a young age. But when it came to deceiving his audience, he really shouldn't have worried. Because while previous generations would have found that to be offensive, the sales and the support he got online showed that his fans didn't really care. In fact, they found it refreshing. For instance, in a Reddit post discussing how Lil Tekka admitted to capping on every song, some users claimed that this was the main reason they liked Tekka, specifically for how he doesn't give a fuck. This was backed by another- that's, And that's the realest shit somebody ever said. He being honest, he just making music, bro. And that's why he getting the support. And if Lil Tekka ever see this, bro, I fuck with Lil Cuz, cuz I never put, bro, come on now. Y'all can look at, come on now, y'all, come on now. Y'all really think that little brace face really out here spinning up, come on now. And y'all putting that image on him, but y'all ain't keeping that same heat for Drake. Y'all ain't keeping that same heat for Gunna. Gunna, Gunna, if any, bro, if anything, Gunna really, really deserved this heat. Gunna really was out here talking that gangster shit, really with the gangsters, and he snitched. Gunna really snitched. And y'all still fucking with Gunner, and y'all having this heat full of Tekka. Get the fuck out of here, bro. I ain't having the smoke. I'm defending Tekka, bro. 
I'm not having none of that. No. Another comment that. reading, Tekka is the realest rapper. He straight admits he never shot anyone, and he just says stuff that sounds good on tracks. I don't see how that makes him fake. Could he rap about stuff that he actually does? Yes, but who wants to hear about a 16 year old playing GTA, shooting hoops, and doing homework all day? As Tekka continued to drop music and featured on tracks from Internet Money, among others, he had been so successful that he chose to reject being on the double XL freshman list in 2020 because he already outpaced it. Now, you may think that Tekka was being a bit too full of- And that's true. The, the freshman list used to be, the freshman list used to be when niggas was underground getting a buzz and shit. And I remember seeing some of my favorite rappers make, finally make the freshman list. Like, damn, they, they finna go mainstream. You got on a freshman list before you made main, like being on a freshman list made you mainstream. Now you gotta be blown the fuck up. What's the point of being on a freshman list after you done did all the work? Like, Boss Man d on a freshman list this year. That nigga already blown up. That nigga got a whole album out, finna drop his second one. Got the whole world out here loving fat niggas again. He did all that already, and now y'all wanna put him on a freshman? Get, man, get out of here. Who else on the, uh, Scar Lip on a freshman list this year? She been hot fucking uh, mexican lt been hot uh what's my boy other big nigga uh he from texas uh he been hot all these niggas been hot and now they on the freshman list they should have been on that shit last year bruh of himself here and that these type of results would either stagnate or drop off eventually however if we compare how his music has aged in comparison to his peers like low pump smoke perp or ybn the mirror you'll see that tekka is miles ahead of them tekka hey. released two albums in 2019 bruh, we finna start with the we finna start with the ybn the mirror hey bro oh hey bro, we gotta start the ybn the mirror whatever he did it is what it is he from bama he made it out he from Birmingham. He from he he made it out the city. Listen, bro, we not finna keep the Wabi in the mirror, hey, bro. That's what we not finna do, bro. Team. And while they performed similarly and kept his name in the conversation, they didn't have the same impact as his debut project. This could have easily been perceived as a fall off or that he wasn't as good as he once was. Because historically, child stars don't really stick around. Rappers like Lil Pump popped off at 17 and by the end of 2020, he was pretty much already irrelevant. Plus, Tekka had that reputation as a liar hanging over him. But while someone like Lil Pump had fallen off because people got sick of him, Tekka did the smart thing and took a step. Along the way, he leveled up his mindset and found out how to turn his weakness into strengths. After his project, We Love You Tekka 2, dropped in August of 2021, the Long Island rapper kept a pretty low profile. Aside from an occasional feature here and there, not much was known about his next move. That is until, almost out of nowhere, he proved that all that time away hadn't been wasted when he dropped the song titled 500 Pounds. This song went pretty hard, gaining nearly 13 million views in just four months. A pretty impressive stat for a non-mainstream rapper. And straight away, his fans were happy to welcome him back. The first track to drop from his new project, Tech, the press run for the album stressed that while other rappers from his class stayed static or refused to evolve, he actively took time to hone in on his skill set. When you practice and care about your craft, you get better over time. Even if I thought I was good a year ago, Looking back now, I'm way better now. I'm way better at speaking about what I'm going through and actually translating it in a way to where it's inviting people into my world instead of just blurting information at people. Like, yo, I'm sad right now. Yo, I'm happy. I just bought a Gucci bag. Although he may have been a frequent liar, his delivery showed a clear awareness of his exaggeration, making it difficult for many people to become upset about it. While other rappers of his era have plummeted out of the world's view, Tekka made a strong comeback, and a lot of that comes down to how he's emphasized growth. Can't be on the same shit that I've been on since a young kid. Like, so definitely, definitely expect some, some growth on there. Definitely expect some more talking about the topic, not talking around the topic. Like, a lot of confidence on that for sure. Judging by the fact that he still amassed over 1 billion streams in 2023 alone, Tekka is seemingly going nowhere and is content with his position in the game. He's no longer fixated on spinning the block, toting glocks in his music videos, or that he wants people to test his gangster like many other rappers we discussed recently. Instead, he explicitly- Bruh, he go <laughs> this nigga fed out to see me, bruh. Hey, bruh, <laughs> he fed out to see me, bruh. 
Hey, bro, quit playing on YBN. They ain't like that, bro. Quit playing on Lil Nightmare. They ain't like that, bro. He wildin'. He recently states that his sole focus is on work. While other rappers boast about being outside, Tekka is content indoor. In fact, his childhood stardom has accelerated his maturity beyond his years. Every time I be getting invited outside, like, party or something like that. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna be blessed when I'm 35 and chilling on my yacht, just thinking about all the time I sacrificed when I was 20. I don't really care to be party when I don't like them anyway. I've been introduced to a lot of shit that a lot of people are excited by in their 30s when I was a young teen. So right now I look at all that shit and I'm like, bro, that's boring. I don't want to go to the club and spend a bunch of money on bottles. That's boring. Let's do some other shit. Let's make some money. You trying to spend money. With the tech album outselling projects from huge rappers like Quavo and Lil Yachty with 41,000 units, the 21-year-old has proven that gaining success beyond your wildest dreams at a young age isn't a death sentence. And even today, he's still openly capping in his raps. I don't think nobody know nobody with 500 pounds. If you got 500 pounds, I don't know if I trust you. That's a lot of stuff, 500 rounds. I don't know if I trust you either. Against all odds, Tekka hasn't just survived, but he's thrived to the point that young listeners today actually see him as an inspiration because of his maturity and how he's outlasted other rappers in his position. I just love watching Tekka interviews and the way he expresses himself. I learned a lot from him. Tekka seems so comfortable as he's grown as an artist. Happy for him and love the album. Thrown into the spotlight at the age of 16, Tekka had to grow up fast. So it's not surprising that he ventured. It's cause he himself, bro. Well, listen, people, when you yourself and truly yourself and one, bro, listen, bro, listen, bro. When you are 100% comfortable with being yourself, that authentic, that authenticity, damn, authenticity, fuck, my, damn, this other, that six, fuck. The authenticity it, you cannot hide that. You cannot shy away from that. People can't do nothing but respect it. So when you are yourself and you wholeheartedly believe in yourself and know that like, bro, I can rap about whatever the fuck I want to and folks gonna fuck with it just because I'm me and I'm not, I'm being myself. And this is what I want to hear. So if I want to hear this, I know they want to hear this. If you that, bro, can't nobody take that away from you. So if he comfortable with himself knowing that he not out here doing all that stuff, and he comfortable enough to sit there on genius and tell all y'all he not doing that, he comfortable with himself and doing whatever the fuck he want to do and saying whatever the fuck he want to say, then that's, a, then that's all you need. It's different when you got somebody like Gunna or Drake who portraying this image, trying to be that, and they not that, and they steadily coming out saying that they're that being that trying to hide from that like gunner he won't even acknowledge that he ratted on thug and he keeps saying he didn't just because he signed a a thing to where they can't use him in court but he snitched and that's what it is and you got drake out here wilding saying all this in the rap and now he's trying to portray this image when people was fine with wheelchair jimmy and drake could say all this stuff and then he come out and do what Tekka did and be like bro i'm not doing that shit i'm not on that it just sounded dope on the song that's what the theme of the song was about i have more respect for him but y'all coming at little Tekka, but he being himself anyway y'all like comment subscribe the original video gonna be in the comments y'all tell me if y'all fuck with this one uh i'm just you know keeping the content going keeping it keeping it pushing and uh i'll see y'all in the next one peace out